This is the breakaway. Julian Alaphilippe will be content to take the yellow jersey to the team hotel for the rest day. He'll have at least another two mornings to enjoy waking up to that, hanging from the shower rail or wherever you keep a mile jaune. Simon Yates with the stage win, his second at this year's Tour de France, but it's a battle for GC that has us all talking. Well, Brian Smith and Sir Bradley Wiggins are here with me to look through another phenomenal stage at this year's Tour de France and the last two weeks, indeed. As we stand here now, Sir Bradley Wiggins, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who is in position to win the Tour de France? Grant Thomas. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> quite a turnaround from yesterday. We said that today was crucial for Grant to back up from yesterday. But actually, as I said yesterday, he, he time trolled to the finish. He time trolled from the f to, when he got dropped early on on the last climb today. He just set his pace to the finish. Fortunately for him, he had Walt Powell's with him, which was a, a welcomed addition to that team. But there was some sort of confusion going on with... As, as, as Sean said before in transmission, that, you know, a, maybe a question mark from the other guys on how good Geraint would be. Bernal front G saying afterwards that he felt strong enough to attack, but he didn't want to attack because Bernal was there. I mean, it leaves you wondering what Geraint was capable of today. And, um, you know, they've got to get that right, Ineos, if they're going to win this tour. After today, I think there's, there's going to be some heads scratching and some, put some heads together and come up with a plan for next week. I want, I want to ask you about that in just a moment. But firstly, Brian, you stood here very confidently yesterday and today and said if Julian Alaphilippe uh, was in the yellow jersey at the start of today, you could see him taking it all the way to Paris. What do you think now? It's a rest day tomorrow. <laughs> and if you've got the form... You can you can recover quicker as well. Are you saving so, face, or is that this no, what you no, think? no, no? I still think he's he's got a chance, he, and I think he believes he's got a chance. But just getting back to that uh, bit with Aeneas, it's very difficult in, in the car behind. You can see them on the on the radio talking. There was confusion. They didn't know what to do. There isn't that relationship which we had last year between uh, Thomas and Froome. They, they they understand what's happening. They go through the process. They didn't have a clue what was happening today, and I said it in commentary. Walt Pulse has to pull now, and they were still talking on the radio, still talking, because they could have put even more distance into Alaphilippe there and, and hurt him even more. When a man's hurting as much as he was, you put the pressure on. As Dave says, when you put the knife in, you turn it and keep turning it. They Dave never... who? Brailsford. OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bradley, you know the team well. You know Dave mm. Brailsford well. Um, you've been in that setup when things have gone well and when they've gone not so well. What will be going on in that team hotel tonight and over the course of the rest? Well, day? I mean, if you look back at the start of the climb, obviously, as it started to split and Pino attacked, Bernal just literally stayed with the pace. And Geraint does what he normally does. is He doesn't go with the acceleration. He just continues his time trial to the summit. A to B, as fast as I go from this point. After that, Bernal clearly was struggling in the wheel of Pino. It's at that point, we did see Geraint on the radio. I mean, it, it's so hard. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. It, you know, they're, they're already out of breath. It's hard to get that message across. As Brian said, you know, sometimes that call has to come from maybe Nicolas Portal, who might be a minutes behind on the group. It is difficult. And then, as we saw, Geraint was slightly disappointed. He said he was stuck between a rock and a hard place as to what to do. It's a very difficult position, but they need to sort that out quick because G still could win this Tour de France. Do you know what I think about that is um, G maybe lost a bit of confidence yesterday. Definitely, he yeah. didn't want to make that big call today when he should have done. He should have stepped up as the Tour winner from last year. He should have stepped up and said, you do this because in the team car, it's, it's nuts. You don't see these pictures. They're down the road. You don't. The first car does not see these you have to make these decisions on your own. And that's where Geraint went wrong today. And even when, but I think Bernal done the right thing in going with Pino, but when he was dropped, you have to really question, should he have dropped back to Geraint Thomas and the two of them ridden in? I still believe it's a two-pronged attack. They have to keep two prongs. It's very dangerous to keep playing that though, isn't it? Because yeah. it can go wrong, as we've mm -hmm. seen. And a Bernal and Froome two-pronged attack isn't the same as a Bernal and Froome, where the communication's hard, they train Bernal together. And Sorry, Bernal and Garant is not the same as Froome and Garant last year, where mm. the communication, there's a great mutual respect between the two. So it, it's a difficult one, but they have to get this sorted out going into next week. And, and, and knowing Dave, you know, he'll, they'll calm down. Mm -hmm. It's been a good day for Garant. It's been a good Pyrenees for Garant. Mm -hmm and they'll get things under, under order. Well, not such a good day for the yellow jersey, losing some time and showing some cracks in his form. Julian Alaphilippe, here he is after the stage today. Yes, it was, I, I expect a, a really hard day like today. I, I give everything. Uh, my, my team uh, did really also a really great job to, to protect the yellow jersey and to control the race. And at the end, uh, voilà. I was uh, I wasn't my limit and uh, I'm really happy to stay in yellow. 
Because the, the, you, you lose some time, but you still have a, a, an interesting margin on, on Garen Thomas, for example. Still 1 minute 35, so... Yeah, it's one more day in yellow. I'm happy. It's, uh, it's my, it was my, my goal to keep you uh, in yellow, and uh, I'm really happy that uh, I'm I still a uh, leader for the, the rest day and uh, the next stage. But it will be a really hard uh, last week, so I w just want to enjoy. It's, it's very hard because you have to focus on Garen Thomas, Kreuzweig, Landa, Thibaut Pinot. Well, I just have to, to be focused on me, you know. It's one more day in yellow. I'm so happy. And uh, for the, the GC, uh, the next week will be really crucial. And uh, allez, what, anyway, what's happened, I'm already really happy. Uh, tomorrow it's rest, 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 more rest. Ah, I have training, I have press conference, I want to see my family, and I hope I can uh, rest a little bit. <laughs> well, Julian Alaphilippe does still hold the race lead after stage 15, but his gap has been eaten into. Garrett Thomas is now 135, Stephen Kreuzweg 147. Thibaut Pino, after that phenomenal effort, moves up to fourth, just three seconds behind Kreuzweg. Egan Bernal at 202. We've got Bookman, Landa, Valverde, Fulsang, and Rigoberto Aran. And uh, Julian Alaphilippe mentioned there on the rest day, of course, he will have training, he will have press conference. And every day that he has been in yellow adds to the fatigue, doesn't it? Because with that comes an awful lot of responsibility that everyone else doesn't need to bother with. Yeah, I just think he's getting carried away in the moment too much now as well. That you know, all of France we start talking about this guy could win the tour. It's clearly, it's clearly thinking about that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's on the front of the newspapers every day. France are loving him. You know, the first French win in 34 years. He can't ride like that every day and win the tour. He's going to have to get a bit clever, especially with no team. You know, he's got to start gauging his effort. He cannot ride on the limit until he blows every day. And he did that today, and he lost valuable time. And, you know, for someone who's completely on their own, he's going to have to start using Ineos a little bit more. Stay with them guys, stay with G, stay with Welk Pals, and, and strength in numbers, really. And it's for them to get rid of him. He doesn't need to have to be trying to ride away with the likes of Thibaut Pino. Bradley, you say he's getting caught up in the moment. And when you won the Tour de France in 2012, you, I think you and the whole team just knew how to shut down, shut down your emotions. Even when you won, there was no celebration. It was back to London and straight into the yeah. Olympic bubble. In a way, it's rather lovely he's able to enjoy this moment. Oh, isn't absolutely. It? Especially watching it. I mean, you know, he, aside from looking like a spitting image of Damon Hill, <laughs> he's been absolutely fantastic for us to watch. And I really do hope that he can get into the Alps in yellow because it's made for a superb racing. And, and Grant's riding the most, the cleverest out of that group. Stefan Kreuzvik as well. They're really experienced GC guys. Um, and we're all praying, we're all hoping, we're all wishing, as we do with Thibaut Pino, the way he's riding, because it makes for brilliant TV. Mm. Brian, you've been quite critical of how Jumbo Visma have played this. They've been strong, they've been up there until the end, but you feel that they've been dragging Alaphilippe in their wheels, really. But they will be happy, surely, with how this race is going for them. Yeah, I think that you saw an attack by Kreuzberg. That's what that was what had to happen, and that's what we wanted to see. You can't just drag him up, up the climb. They were actually... well. How, he, he never put himself into the wind until Pino went on the attack and then he was forced to do it. But as Bradley says, he went deep a few times in that clean, climb, but he came back. It's his, his recovery was unbelievable. I thought when he, when he was cracking, he would, he would have lost a lot more time, possibly the yellow jersey, but he dug deep, he dug deep. But even tomorrow, he's, it sounds as if he's going to have a, a really hard day <laughs> with, you know, everybody want to see him. And that's the problem. When you've got that yellow jersey, especially here in France, it's going to be a busy day. He's going to have to say no to a lot of things and, and really rest. But I think he, he can come back. He might be OK in maybe one or two of the, sta the mountain stages, but it's the third one. And that's where, like, we've been talking about Geraint just chipping away, chipping away. I still think it, they, they, they need both Bernal and Geraint um, to, go, to go forward. But with Pino, he looks amazing. But the same confidence on the crest of a wave... There's no reason why he can't crack in a couple of days' time. Well, uh, one man who didn't crack today, Simon Yates, who took his second stage win at this year's Tour de France. Let's hear from him now. He's been speaking to Ashley House. Uh, Simon, a big breakaway went away at the beginning. From the start, did you think that someone from the breakaway would make it? Um, there was always a chance for the breakaway. Um, and that's why, you know, so many guys were there. Um, we tried to play a few cards, and I, w I was the guy who ended up in there. Um, and yeah, it was really full gas from start to finish. Uh, in ter having said that, there were some guys who weren't that far off in the GC. Amongst the breakaway guys, were you trying to shake them, for example, so that you might be given a bit more leash? 
Um, nah, not really. Uh, I was just trying to race for the win. Um, and yeah, it was like it was a it was a hard start. So normally when it's a hard start there, and with the parkours that we had, um, it's normally quite a lot of climbs there, which is always a uh, you know tougher to win than than if I like the other day when I stepped into the breakaway, it was it was mainly big guys, so it was uh, not easy. But I mean, you know, my chances are probably higher. Um, so today was yeah really tough. Uh, Matt White just told us that you segmented that last climb up into little sections really really well. Can you tell us how you did that? Uh, well, I had to go, you know, with the guys racing behind the GC guys, uh, there wasn't much time to wait around, actually. Um, had to really, you know, go quite early. Uh, I'm not sure how many Ks it was when I left uh, Simon there, who, who did a really good job. Uh, I have to say thank you for, for helping me down the descent there. Um, and, yeah, not, not much else to say about it, really. It was, it was full gas. Uh, you know, take a breather when you can and uh, squeeze when you can. And there was no, nothing else to it, really. And at the same time, it's been a disappointing couple of days, but as a group, you've managed to turn it around. Tell us a bit about what that means with the team. Well, we're running through stages here now. Uh, you tell me the last time we did that. Um, <laughs> now we're doing, we're doing great as a team. Of course, Adam didn't have a great day yesterday, and that's OK. We'll bounce back and uh, analyse things, and, and I'm sure he'll be back at the, at the top again. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. He's as cool as a cucumber, Simon Yates. He doesn't seem fears by anything, does he, Bradley? No, and that's why he's so good. Mm. We spoke about it quite a lot during the Giro, didn't we? His, his mental resilience, you know, he's sort of kind of casual. He's very focused, obviously, very professional at what he does, but that's what makes him so good, really. That calm, calming kind of mentality in the moment. Didn't panic down. Use Simon Getch, as, as he said, as long as possible through that valley and hit him right at the right moment and time trial to the finish. And... You know, as I said, we've not seen the last of Simon in this tour. When you consider there was 36 riders in that group, and there was some quality riders, and, and it went on that second category climb, so there had to be some strong riders in there, and he rode away from them all. Simon Getsch could won a stage in 2015 by doing something similar. He went away before the, the final climb and then solo to the victory. He knew what he had to do, but Simon just waited, waited, used. You know, when, you, when you're talking about the quality of that breakaway, and he comes out and he's the only man standing from that breakaway and wins the stage, that was a superb performance. Yeah, impressive stuff. And Bradley, you spent another day on the motorbike mm. today. Um, how are the riders finding that and finding you moving up and down in your very understated yeah. jacket? It's getting in the way, isn't it? Well, no, I, got, I had a quick <laughs> chat with Pino today, actually, funny enough, on a climb where most people are getting dropped. So it, uh, did he respond? Yeah, he did, actually. He said, merci. Hein? <laughs> <laughs> I just said, well done for yesterday. But actually, I was there, you know, the, the climb that the, um, the breakaway went on, I was at the back of the peloton at that point. The amount of riders that were getting shelled at that point early on in the stage, I mean, the likes of... Uh, um, the big German from Lotto Sudal, sorry, I forget his name Kluger. now. Roger, Roger Kluger. Kluger. He was out the back after about 10, 12k. I'm not too sure if he's made the time delay today. Caleb Ewan, you know, there was there was a lot of guys on that climb, and they had they had a long best part of 150k on their own. They never really got back because the racing it was it was just flat out from the start, as we saw G say earlier in the interview. So. An incredibly tough day for everyone, from the from the guys at the back to the guys that won the stage. Was it not Roger Kluger whose secrets you were giving away earlier it in was, the stage? Yeah, you would have yeah. hated that, wouldn't you? Well, no, that's <laughs> just the way it is. I mean, that's how do you think Cab's had a professional career? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Cab, no joke. Oh, well, hey, I used to be with him when I used to be fat, <laughs> so I was always there. I used to duck back in the cars, and you know, when it was like that, because you could sit behind the car and have a bit of a breather. He'd be a nightmare if you were riding in the peloton, wouldn't he, Brian? He still is. <laughs> I'm not in the pit. Oh, I am. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, of course. Talk Forgot to about me. That. You're not supposed to talk to people. <laughs> no, they talk to me. And we love that. We love no. it. Well, we have a rest day coming up. We can all get our laundry done um, and have a bit of recovery for the riders. There won't be much of a rest, however. They will be uh, going out on training rides and uh, seeing to the usual media obligations. A welcome break for many, though, and the GC riders should have an extra day off. Not so for the sprinters on stage 16. We start and finish in Nîmes, covering 177 kilometres to finish off right back where we started. Just the one official speed bump, a Category 4 climb, just over halfway through, but plenty of loves along the way. Uh, but should be one for the fast finishers. Well, you can watch highlights of today's stage at 8 tonight on Eurosport 1. We'll be back at a quarter to midday on Tuesday. That's live on Eurosport 1 as well. And if that's too long to wait before getting your next cycling fix, then tomorrow morning you'll be able to download the Rest Day Bradley Wiggins podcast to be recorded on the road to our hotel tonight. So you never know what you're going to get. Head to your podcast platform and subscribe to not miss that one. Well, as we leave the Pyrenees, it's Simon Yates who will be celebrating into the Rest Day maybe a glass of bubbles at the team hotel tonight knowing there's a relative lie-in to come and the party continues for Julian Alaphilippe for now he will have an extra rest day to savour his position as a leader of the Tour de France we'll be back in two days time Tel Aviv
Jerusalem.